Right, last week it was um, water and pastel, wasn't it? And today we're going to do acrylics. We've got another student just joining us in a minute from England. Come all the way just to paint here with me. It's great, isn't it? Um, <laughs> you think? You think? <laughs> <laughs> and all we're going to need today is a very simple set of brushes, just these here. Um, for acrylics and oils, I don't need as many brushes. I like to use filberts, which are these slightly rounded end ones. They're flat and rounded because I've got more control with those to either paint broad or to paint narrow. Yeah, so broad or narrow. i bring that camera back down to there in a minute. And then I keep um, little round ones as well. And there's a fan there, but I've also put a couple of my rake brushes out here. That's these ones because we're going to be doing a little bit of texturing as well. Very rapid way of working. Where I'm going to show you, we don't even need to um, prime the board. It's just ordinary MDF. This is my Stay Wet palette. Now, you can save yourselves a lot of money with this. You don't have to spend lots of money on the Stay Wet palette. This is a sandwich box, believe it or not, and in it two layers of paper towel, and then you put a layer, which I haven't, but you should put a layer of greaseproof paper. And you put water into that, and with the lid on, that will stay wet forever. The, the, the acrylics will not dry. Okay? If you wanted to save oil paints, you can even put cling film around them and put them into your freezer and freeze them. So okay. you can keep oil paints longer as well. People don't realise these things, okay? So oil paints you can keep longer in the freezer. Acrylics, you put them into a stay wet palette to start with, and as long as you've got water in that base, they will keep damp. <laughs> And we're going to paint straight onto the board, and we're doing this little one of the bluebells. Now, this technique, um, it's the same one I use, and it's, it's very, very fast, very, very rapid. We start with our mid-tones, and work to our darks, and finish with the highlights. Um, so we're going to work up all of these background colours here, and I'm going to block in most of these areas very quickly. If I was going to draw it out, what I would tend to do normally, I wouldn't even use a pencil, what I would tend to do drawing out, is just take a little brush. Oh, that's a China Graph pencil, by the way. You were asking me next week. We're doing China Graph pencil, watercolor, and pastel, and a snow scene. Okay, okay. So completely different. We've got a spring scene here. We're doing a snow scene next time. And then I'm away for two weeks later. So you'll miss me greatly, I know. <laughs> uh, I should be gorging and picking myself at a wedding. But you see how that um, peels down, mm. and then you peel the paper off. You haven't got to sharpen it with a knife outside. It's quite handy. But go on, glass. We're going to use this to draw onto the watercolor paper, and then watercolor over the top of it so it shows through and then put pastel to highlight after that, but that's quite fun to do. Right, all I'm going to do here to draw out, and I don't even say I don't need, not normally even bother with a pencil, is just get a bit of paint, just get going in my palette, it's just getting a bit um, jelly-like, and I would just draw it out. And I'm, I'm not even going to bother measuring up, and I'll just do it briefly on here, but into quarters and eighths, so just, just, just so I basically know where things are, exactly the same. All I want to do is just know about where things are coming, so about that far down here, to about that far down there, is where that tree comes, and it's about halfway across here, so I'm saying there. Euro 20. Yeah. Okay. Euro 20 just pass that one round and just feel the end, would you? <laughs> not not that end, silly. Oh, God. I'd have to have to film you. You, know, you. you can't get the students these days, the quality, you know. <laughs> You feel it's not too stiff and it's not yeah, too soft, yeah, yeah? yeah? Now, if it's too soft, like a watercolour brush, it will clog up. If it's too stiff, like the bristle brushes, it lifts the paint off. So, although I'm using very stiff ones for these textural ones, because they're not forgiving on brushes, I'd use a, you know, a couple of brushes every hour, um, for this sort of work, I prefer these nylon brushes, um, which are not too soft and not too stiff, because they lay the paint on very nicely. Now, because we're not using a primer, I've got to use a fair bit of body colour. White is called a body colour. Um, a body colour is opaque. In other words, it's a filler. These cheaper acrylics, and we can't use cheap watercolours. We've got to use expensive watercolours. But we can use cheaper oils and we can use cheaper acrylics. But they tend to be a little bit more translucent in many colours. So I tend to use a bit of a body colour. I, I want to make this background... Mm -hmm. I don't colour. agree with you with the oil. Hmm? The cheap oil colours. I don't agree with you. When I say cheap, um, well, why don't you agree? And I'll tell you why. Because they were not, uh, how do you call it, decking. Um, fill it up. Ah, the, the, cheap the thickness of yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Right. When I say cheap, I don't mean the Chinese little tubes. 
Yeah. I mean students' quality. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Students' Sorry. quality, as compared, to, you're quite right. Yeah. Uh, really cheap paints are no good. They're kiddies' paints. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. But what I'm saying is students' quality, as compared to artist quality. Okay. The okay. artist quality you will pay an awful lot for. They may be slightly more permanent. They're slightly heavier. But on the whole, we can get away with say um, the the Rowney and the, the Dela uh, students' quality quite well. I mean, I've done, been using them ever since I was a student and I've had no problems with them. But I wouldn't buy those little tiny tubes that you get ever so cheap from the market yeah. because they wouldn't have the body, the colour, the, and besides which I use tubes this size, yeah. you know, and tins. And I buy big pots of this paint. So what I meant was there, now I've been so correctly pulled up by one of my students, is that I meant student's quality, not artist's quality. Okay? So this is, this is the student's quality. Yes, sir. And I'm putting a bit more body colour in, which is the white. And I want to make a sort of grey colour for the background here and these greens. And I'm going to use my brush as texture immediately. So rather than paint little bits in, I'm going to try and get some of the texture and the effects of this almost immediately just by using the brush tip in different directions, by twisting it, yeah? So what I'm going to do, like last week, I'll do a bit, you do a bit, I'll do a bit, you do a bit, yeah? Let's look at this sort of grey colour behind. It's a melange of colour. To make grey, we normally use, what, two colours did I say? A, a tertiary and no, a primary and a tertiary, yeah, which was the the blue and the brown. Um, so if I use a bit of blue into that, I'll take this this blue for instance, because there's so many different blues we've been learning about now. Warm and cool blues, aren't we? And for this grey, I want to start slightly purple. I'm going to use a little bit of this brown here, and look at this lovely sort of grey blue I get there. Which if I bring that brush across to here, you see where we're getting that sort of grey colour, yeah. So we're always using colour, we're not using black and white, we're using colour. Now if I put that straight onto this board, look at that lovely colour we get. And I'm going to just leave, I don't want to paint all these trees, and I can't, can't be asked with all of that. I'm just going to leave where the trees are a little bit, just so I know where I am. And look how the board is soaking that colour in. One of the beauties of painting in this way is that the board actually soaks the paint up. And it dries very, very quickly because it soaks it up. And it's the same with oil paint. It will actually soak it in, so you can use oil paint quite thinly with with um, with terps, a white substitute, um, and already, I'm, even though I'm just putting one colour on, I'm immediately using the brush in sort of different directions. I've got some of that colour coming down here, so I'm going to start bringing it down there a bit. And I paint like this normally when I'm out of doors, <laughs> quite mad. Um, but yeah, I tend to paint. I'm painting over these trees a bit now. Um, quite abruptly and brusquely and rapidly with this sort of technique. Now I want to start adding colours to that, so I'm going to take a little bit of the green, whatever green I see going on, this is slightly acidy, so we're looking around here now, and little strokes look like this in my, in my background. I want my colours, I'm going to exaggerate the warm and cools, I want my colours in the background to be slightly cooler than my colours, that is in greens, than my colours in the foreground. Unless it's a sunset or sunrise, we've mentioned this before, colours are cooler in the background and warmer in the foreground. And photographs tend to flatten things out. So I want to make some of these greens warmer or browner and most of these greens cooler. Well really I've got quite an acidy, cool colour going on in there. I'd like a little bit more pink in that background. So using the same colour, I'll get some tissue in a minute or some rolls so we can clean these palettes out. Um, I want a little bit more pink in there so I'm going to take a little bit of this colour. See all these colours in there, Leslie? Mm -hmm. Right, put that thing there, look. Right. You start to see it? Yes, yeah. I do. You're going, to, you're going to learn. You are going to become privileged. Now, see how I'm using the brush in little strokes vertically now. I can use this brush on its tip, or I can use this brush on its edge. I can twist the brush to get these effects that I want. So I'm using the brush tip now for these pinks to start to get these little bits of branch. Get off. <laughs> no, I can't reach you, do that. Um, right, there's, then there's this light bit here, look, just coming through, little brush strokes, crisscrosses. And past students coming here barracking me. <laughs> that comes right through here, right through here, little brush strokes. And already we're getting the, the feeling of the wood. Because it's a bit darker here, look, so let's take a slightly deeper blue, this one. I'm going to add it into that one there. Slightly deeper blue, and a little touch of the same brown again. And I'm going to get a, a deeper grey, deeper grey, warm brown, blue. Here we are, that colour. Now looking at this bit here. 
blue greys into there. So you've really got to look at these subtleties and differences of colour. You've got the other painting there, so it's very similar. This is this little bit here, little bits of that grey, and I'm using little strokes. Now I could use a finer brush. It's a very small painting. I could start to come in here now, but I'm a lazy bugger, and I prefer to hang on to a brush as long as I can without having to change it. So I'm going to use this brush as much as I can before I'm forced to, to pick up another smaller brush get this effect here. And these trees coming through in the background. Now we look at these trees even. You know they're not far off that colour so I'm going to just use that brush to bring. And you remember when I did the picture the other day and I put those flowers in, the picture suddenly appeared didn't it? Mm. This is going to happen here. I'm doing this and you're thinking oh he's just splodging paint about the place. But I'm making these marks, each of them about what is here. Those greys come all the way through there. This is this area here now. They're coming down into here. If I've got the colour on my brush, use it. So if the colour's on your brush and you see it somewhere else, use it. Doesn't matter if a little bit of the board shows through. In places. Building it up like that, then so we're getting that background effect. It can be a bit lighter in places later. We're going to bring the lights in at the end. I'm doing the mid-tones and the darks now. So coming down through. Um, Let's establish some of these trees, the darker colour of the trees. Same colour, take some blue, a bit stronger this time, a bit less white, a bit less body colour, a bit more of the other blue greys, some more of that that's quite warm. And we're coming on to this colour now, look. You wouldn't think that those colours make it, but this is what I'm teaching you. We're seeing how to make them now that we've got this sort of grey colours coming on through the trees. I, put, I can go backwards and forwards when I like. In other words, I can go light and dark as I like. Right down through here, I've got some more I need to put on there, come down through here. It'll, 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 although it's glazing, it'll still work. So a little bit more warmth here, a bit more of the brown. Too much! Oh God! More blue in there again. This branch here coming through is quite warm. That's a bit warmer through there, that tree there. A bit more warmth just... I'm going to break the colour up as I go through that one. Little twigs and things coming through here. And some of that dark, while well, I've got it on my brush, is coming in underneath this tree here. I'm going a fair way with this because I want you to sort of follow this right through in a minute to where, up to where I've got to. A bit darker up here. Some of this tree in the background a bit darker there. Little bits of this are darker. So I've worked for my greys through. Now let's break the brush up. I'm going to do that with the brush look and start to break the end up slightly. And let's start to play with those little bits of texture. Do you see how I now can start using the same brush, putting some of that bark texture in just by pushing the brush down. Not too hard, don't, don't destroy my brushes please. But just enough to start making texture there. And you can just dawdle them down like that. Now the greens start to get a bit stronger. I'm going to work the greens a bit warmer. I don't want to go too far because I want you to, to follow it in stages. They get a bit warmer, a bit stronger, so I'm going to take some more of that sort of yellow green. If it's not yellow enough, I'll take some yellow. I'll add it into that. Put some of this green in. Too, don't want it too strong, I want it quite blue, so I'm taking more of this blue just to keep it quiet in the background. So that's still quite a bit yellow, but it's quite it's quite cool. Coming down here, I'm going to paint the underpainting. Got little bits of this, these greens coming up here into the same greens coming up into the leaves, and I'm just stippling it in with the end of the brush. Look, just stippling it in all the way down through here, all the way down through here, quite strong here. Just a basic colour. Comes all the way down there. I'm going to be able to come back and touch these bits up. What I want to do is get this board covered right now. I'm going to cover this board up. Now let's make a slightly stronger green, a warmer green. See how much warmer that is? It's got more brown in it. So I've used this one, which is the warmer green. Look how much warmer that is. Look how yeah. that's cool. And it's one next to another. Remember we said the dark next to the light, the warm next to the cool, the rough next to the smooth. 
Here we have the warm next to the cool. I'm going to cover the whole of that in this. Then I'm going to use little strokes of the brush that's almost dry without using the, the rake brush yet to start to give the effect of the grasses in here. I'm linking one into another look. So I'm linking this now up into here. Little brush strokes to give the feeling of the grasses. It's quite green through there. How quickly this painting is forming. Very rapid way of working. Very working, a bit like Monet. Look how warm these greens are here. Just so I'm showing while I'm showing you. Let's use this warm yellow. This is a warm yellow. It's yellow ochre, look. How golden that is. If I put that there, look. So if we do a bit of that on this on this tree trunk here, could you just use it the tip of it? Look how golden yellow and warm that is. Right, that's my background basically done before I put any details on. This is as far as I'd love you to get in the next 10 or 15 minutes between you. Okay? So <laughs> it is, and this is how we start. We start loose and we paint roughly. But the approximate bits are there. I'm just going to take this away a minute and show you from distance. Also the light. Let's find it in the light a bit more. So no light there. Is if I can get this into the light, you see that you can see it coming already from a distance. Yeah, it's too close up there. Yeah. You will do because um, where is it? That's it in there. Right. So we'll just. Turn it. Be brave, Leslie. That's right. Get that blue grey going. Make a mess. So there we have Leslie's coming on very nicely. We can see the difference now in the distance. Sue's is coming on, she's just getting her branches sorted out and, tw and twigs coming through. Will's on the same stage, she hasn't quite got to the greens yet, but we're almost there. And Dot's the same, she's pulling out her, her branches with a finer brush at the moment. Great. So far, Leslie, who's getting way ahead of the rest. I haven't done my tweaks yet. That's it. Right, I'm going to go on to my rake brushes now, which are these. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Because I want to do little bits of short texturing amongst the grasses. My, I'm sorry, make sure my picture's still showing in the rake, amongst the, the grasses down here. So it's these at the little areas here, using the same sorts of colours. So here I've got quite a nice yellowy light blue. Let me take some of the blue, I'm talking about green. Um, so I'll take my blue and green together again. And a little bit of yellow into that to make it lighter. There we go. A bit more yellow. I'm taking the cooler yellow now, this lemon yellow from my palette. And let's see how that does. Don't want too much on the end of my brush, otherwise the, the, um, the rakes won't work. It's too clogged up. So I've got to take those out a bit. Let's see if that rake's going to work now. And hopefully I can make little short strokes like this. A little bit more water on there because it's too dry. And you see all these little bits of grass, I'm going to start whipping those in now. Little tiny short strokes, look how effective that is. And I'm going to be doing light and dark of these and they go right up to the tree here. They come up behind the tree here, they come right up into there. So we've got our mid colours and these of course are slightly lighter aren't they? Yes Peter. This is my video last time didn't I when I had to answer myself. <laughs> I'm concentrating so much. Down through here, up into the background there, little bits of greens and textures. Now we want to be slightly darker and the warms. We've got some warms here. That brown that we use with the trees is coming in down here as well. So let's take some of that deep blue, that brown again and I want to bring some of those little bits of brown coming down into the trees. And look how now we're getting the different tones. Suddenly I'm putting the darker on. We've got the mid-tones and now I'm going to use it that way a bit. Bring out some of these bits of branch. I can use the brush in different ways. The, the texture bits coming up here. This is texture. Are... Right, now, with Leslie already um, gone one stage ahead of me here, because um, She's such a good student. I'm really going to get her hated. Um, yes, Peter. <laughs> I don't have a rigger brush. Oh, so no, I've got some rigger brushes in this set. Remember, we've used riggers before, haven't we? Remember the riggers are these long, fine ones? And Leslie didn't think of this this time yet, but she will do now. I'm going to use it with plenty of water. 
a little bit on, that, on the tip of my brush because now I want to be able to start bringing up some of these. This is the details. This is what we're talking about, Leslie, when you're saying you know the amount of detail that's in it. We can now that we can start to paint these these details in bits like that. That's the stage I want you to get before we start doing our final detail because I've almost got this painting done. It's like the other week when it suddenly appeared. That is my basic to my painting. From now on it's going to be details. So I've got a little bit of sponging to do, a little bit of texturing to do, but I'm, my main detail before the flowers and before um, text, some of the texturing in the background, the main hard work is done. From now on it's going, to, it's going to be sheer fun. It's just adding bits on. So for instance, I'll go one stage further. I will take the pinks that we were using earlier, take some body colour, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of the pink, and what I want to get now is these very, very light twigs and branches with the rigger. We can start to paint in some of these very light areas, but they're not whites, they are a colour. And I want some of these lighter colours in there with the, be careful with my brushes, with this brush because we've got some quite light, don't overdo it, in between there there's some lighter, It now starts to look quite complicated and if anybody saw this painting and hadn't seen what, how we'd done it they would think I spent ages and ages doing this with a single brush, which we haven't. Right, that's ready for my next stage. And that's what I want you to get to now, please. Carry on, that's alright. Right, I'm just going to do a little bit more of the light down here because it's sunk a bit. That does happen with these paints on board. If we're painting on a, on a light board background, on a white primer, they will stay lighter. But because we're working into a darker background, especially if it was a dark primer, then the paints will sink as well. So I've got to just go back to my lights a little bit here. I'm going to mix a little bit of very light yellow, yellow greens and just come back in with a few of my stronger yellowy... You see what I mean here, Leslie? Slightly, slightly more yellow, yellow greens here, look. Because they've sunk, yeah? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to bring them back a bit. Well, you get one colour happening, it'll happen through the painting, so I've got those very light bits also in the, in the leaves here. I can use those before I use a sponge. And I can do this with this brush a little bit, but I can also use now my sponge. Absolutely. I'll change this water for you in a minute. A little bit of the edge of the sponge. Get that bit off there to start to do some of this texturing of the leaves. This is this area here, or at the bottom of the tree here. Background here, maybe a little bit. Wherever you see these lights, just down under there. Don't use the sponge too hard, and you see how I'm twisting the sponge. A little bit of light back through here. Instant effects, but that's, you know, that's going to help us, doesn't really matter. Now these brushes are quite pointed, so they give me a fine line. But for instance, this brush has got quite a rounded little end. So if I take that one for these nice little bit of light leaves and I take some white into that existing green we've already got, a little bit of that light blue again, it's a little bit bluer. This is reflecting the sky. So it's quite light and it's reflecting the sky from above. Now if I come into my painting and see these little leaves here I'm going to look at, and I can actually start painting now individual marks and leaves in. So this is where we come down to the details. We've done the very loose painting. Now I'm going to come down to my actual details and we start to really let's put more blue there still. A little bit of turquoise into that now. This is these marks over here on this tree. So I'm really going on to details. Now we come down to these bluebells. So I'm coming on to my final hurdle. Any little details I want to do back here I can do as well. You're going to be surprised how this will look from a distance shortly. But I'm almost there on this painting. I don't need to do a lot more. And we get it finished. Now, we could use a sponge for those, couldn't we? We could use the rake for those. We could use this brush for those. So it's completely up to you how you do it. 
I'm going to use the rake for them so that you've got your total choice and there are three colours going on in those that I can see straight away. It's not one bluebell, there are three. There's a pink, there's a deep blue and there's a quite warm blue. So we've got this blue, the ultramarine, the cobalt. We've got some of the mauve coming in, which is that one. And we've got a pink, uh, which is this, and a little bit of white and a touch of blue. <coughs> I'm going to start with my darkest in this case, which is the ultramarine. I may have to add a little bit of white to it. So that's this colour, our lovely gungy one. I'll find a clean spot for it, which is the darkest of them. I'm going to add a little bit of white to that because it's a little bit too dark. Just so it shows. There we go. Cobalt would have been nice, but I haven't actually got cobalt in this palette. Um, and I'm going to just tickle this coming across in layers. Already my bluebells are starting here. If I want to be more individual, I can use a smaller brush. Have it coming, have a bit of coming through in them. I'm going to put a few more bluebells into mine deliberately because I, I just want a few more to make it a bit more. So this is my deepest blue that I'm working in. You can see it now working against the background warmer colours. Right back through to there. Now let's go to my um, pinky blue. So if I were to take so like this, and I'm going to add it over here with some white. I need a clean part for that. Let's see, that's fairly clean there. So we've got this sort of perhaps quite pinky blue going on. I'm going to, I'm gradually adding a little bit of blue into that, a little bit of that cerulean into that. And it's surprising, but if I can put that colour next to it, can you see the pink in there slightly now? Mm. Glad you can't. Okay. Um, now if I come back here again, we start adding those lighter colours amongst that blue. Then I want a very acid blue amongst these. I've got the purple blue as well, but I want an acid blue. Um, a bit more of this colour, just, just a little bit, just to make it seem... I want those warm to show a bit more, so I'm going to put a little bit of this blue in. And look at the difference that makes. This is the cool against the warm. So I've said three colours, actually using four, I'm using a bit of the cerulean into it, but I deadened it down a fraction. But it makes those warm blues seem much warmer next to it, doesn't it? Now if I want to make that those blues seem cooler still, if I take some of this purple that should be in here, that should be the purple, and I bring some of that purple in there, just a little bit of it here and there, a bit more white into that. There we are, now look at that lovely pinky purple blue. And all of those colours are actually, you can see it on my brush look, you can see the pink there, you can see the blues, they're all there. So for me, I've virtually finished. I can go a little bit more, there's a few more lights I want, so I'm just going to take some of this and just make it very, very light. I just want a few more little white, very light spots amongst this. Right, leave that at that. I'm going to take you on to the final stages. Signature, it could be here or there. I'm going to make it just over here and reach through the what colour. Well, I'm going to make it quite a deep blue deliberately. I have to leave at least a quarter of an inch so because of the frame. So, you know, that's that bit. Right, a little bit darker in places, not quite happy there. I want to be a little bit darker in one or two places with my twigs. Just need to bring them out a little bit. This is where we just finalise the painting. I want one or two slightly darker bits here and there. So using a fine brush now, just going to bring out one or two little bits of shadow here and there. Right, give that a moment to dry, and what I have over here is a picture varnish. Put that over there now, so with an oil painting we need to let it dry for several weeks, if not a lot longer, depending how thick the painting is. But with an acrylic, as soon as that is dry, as long as we're using acrylic varnish, we can varnish it and it will bring the colours out. So let me just come in and I'm actually going to frame them today as well. I've actually got two frames ready. So and you're going home today with finished fully framed pictures. It will soak it in a little bit. It's dry enough now for me to spray it. 
don't breathe in heavily or you'll be away on it. And it doesn't take much of a spray. Um, you see all those colours now, it gives it a translucency, doesn't it? So we're living, if you look along it, now you can see it's shining. We'll let that dry off. And I'm going to put it in the frame and show you, and I think you'll be quite surprised how your paintings are going to come out. So that's what you've got to catch up with now, okay? fully framed picture. I'm just going to ask each of you now what you think you've learnt today technically. Leslie, what just give me two things if you can that you think you've learnt today from painting. Texture and different use of brushes. Right. Sue? How to use a brush. Yeah, brushes, yeah. Um, how to see the depth of colour. So it cools in the background and warm yeah, in the foreground. And how it changes from background to foreground. Also, we should remember in that slightly as well, we haven't done that today, but we should go slightly out of focus more in the background. So for instance, so here, you know, I was saying about softening things a bit. Just take the very light blue and just soften it a bit with the light blue again. Yeah. Because you want to be focused and out of focus as you go back. Okay. So it's the same sort of thing. And that is called aerial perspective. Linear perspective is as the lines go back, aerial is as the colours go back from warm to cool, okay? Will, Will what have you found new today? It's difficult for me in English. Yeah? You can do it in Dutch if you like as well, and then you can translate it. Translate it. No, the... The same things as the rest? The same things as of the brushes, and also... To mix the colours. Yes. It's very important. Yes. For me. The difference in the warms and cool colours yeah. and the greens yeah. and yeah. yeah. Dot anything for you? Um, different colours, different brushes. Yeah. Because you haven't used these before different these no. these rakes, have you? Uh, yeah. No, I haven't. No. no. They're good, aren't they? Yes, they yeah. are. Right, there we are. They've all succeeded and finished and made frame paintings today in a matter of just over two hours, which isn't bad for a finished painting, is it, when you think about it? And mostly, Leslie, because you never would have believed before that you would have finished in this sort of time period, would you? Never. I mean, you're now producing paintings, finished paintings that you hopefully quite like, but within such a short space of time. Well done. Excellent. Next time, snow.